countless millennia in the past, our ape-like ancestors embarked on an evolutionary journey that saw them rise onto two legs. This remarkable transition unfolded in a singular location on Earth, Africa. Fast forward to modern times, this continent, often called the Mother Continent because it's the oldest inhabited one on Earth, has some of the most dangerous places for people to live. Africa is a continent defined by glaring disparities. On one hand, it grapples with profound poverty, as evidenced by the fact that all of the world's ten poorest countries are nestled within its borders. This unfortunate reality positions Africa as the home to the largest concentration of impoverished populations across the globe. However, on the other hand, Africa is a treasure trove of natural resources, particularly minerals, boasting a staggering share about one-third of the Earth's valuable mineral wealth. This bountiful reserve includes essential resources vital for industrial processes, technology, and various other sectors of the global economy. This region boasts the world's most extensive arable landmass, holding the potential for tremendous prosperity for its inhabitants if harnessed effectively. As the cradle of human civilization, Africa naturally serves as a rich source of archaeological findings. Nevertheless, recent discoveries have left researchers astounded as they challenge the very foundation of our shared beliefs and compel us to reconsider long-held notions. Let's delve into these astonishing discoveries. In the Nile Valley at the Duki Gel site in northern Sudan, numerous circular and oval structures have been discovered, showcasing remarkable and meticulous construction for that era. Featuring an impressive array of columns numbering up to 1,400 and numerous ceremonial palaces, the architecture represents a remarkable feat in ancient engineering accomplished by its inhabitants. The intricate architectural details of these ruins have remained hidden until this point, rendering it one of the oldest known historical sites in Africa, dating back 4,000 years. Duki Gel is located just 700 meters away from the city of Kerma, where the Egyptians also lived. It has a unique architectural style that is different from ancient Egypt. Particularly, the oval shapes of the structures align with architectural patterns attributed to African civilizations. After thorough investigation, archaeologists have inferred that the presence of multiple rooms varying in size, resembling meeting spaces, might have served as places of refuge and resistance for African communities against Egyptian attempts to conquer their territories. The largest building at this site boasts an impressive assembly of over 1,400 columns. These grand constructions signify a highly advanced society showcasing distinct sub-Saharan architecture, evident in the circular design elements. This site was inhabited as early as 5000 BC, but it didn't evolve into a genuine city and a significant trading hub until approximately 2000 BC. It stood as a border city connecting Central African civilizations and the Nubian Coptic civilization complex. The scale of the structures unearthed here is awe-inspiring. Several buildings and temples span well over 100 meters in width, featuring towering walls and robust support structures. By 1450 BC, Duki Gel had transformed into a vital military and commercial hub, facing increasing encroachment from its northern neighbor within the Nubian Coptic civilization complex. The inhabitants of Duki Gel constructed highly intricate defensive arrangements, integrating them into their castles and temples within the main buildings, in addition to the city's external defensive walls. The Green Palace contained alleyways leading to a throne with three chairs of varying heights, indicating a hierarchical structure within its ruling class. This site underscores the creativity and technological advancement of the ancient Central African civilizations that migrated north millennia ago, contributing significantly to the formation of what we recognize today as Egypt. Duki Gel provides insight into the fact that well into the Bronze Age, the Central African civilizations had already cultivated intricate technological and social systems. Later civilizations in Africa learned from and changed these advancements in different ways. A shocking revelation has come to light in Ethiopia, where researchers witnessed a geological phenomenon unfolding before our eyes, one that hasn't been observed for hundreds of millions of years. Tectonic movements in Ethiopia indicate the African continent is undergoing a split, potentially giving rise to Earth's sixth ocean. 
The division between the Somalian and Nubian tectonic plates will effectively separate the world's second largest continent into two. A similar occurrence transpired millions of years ago, leading to the division of South America and Africa into distinct continents. The Afar region is at the center of this remarkable event. Here, the tectonic plates are in constant motion, exerting pushing and pulling forces on each other. As a result, the Earth's crust in this area is exceptionally thin, enabling magma from the mantle to rise and create a landscape characterized by volcanoes, hot springs, and geysers. This phenomenon is evidenced by a remarkable 35 miles long split that emerged in 2005. This distinctive rift lies in the area known as the East African Rift Valley, measuring over 50 feet in depth and 65 feet in width. What will Africa look like once this splitting process is fully complete? The smaller of the two continents will encompass present-day Somalia and parts of Kenya, Ethiopia, and Tanzania, while the larger one will comprise the rest of the continent. This evolution will lead to the creation of a new ocean between East Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. Consequently, countries like Kenya and Uganda may potentially acquire coastlines as this new ocean takes shape. Although the potential for the African continent to split and give rise to a new ocean holds immense possibilities, researchers estimate that the complete splitting won't occur for another 5 to 10 million years. A remarkable find in Zambia could potentially challenge our understanding of the Stone Age. This discovery suggests that early humans were already building wooden structures nearly 500,000 years ago. The uncomplicated construction, discovered on a riverbank in Zambia, consists of two logs that fit together with a deliberate notch crafted into the upper log, enabling them to interlock at right angles. This basic structure could have served as a pathway or platform for our ancient human ancestors residing along the Colambo River approximately 500,000 years ago. This information comes from a recent study analyzing cut marks created by stone tools. The University of Liverpool and Aberystwyth University spearheaded this remarkable finding. Experts employed advanced luminescence dating techniques to determine the age of the discoveries. These methods reveal the last exposure of the minerals in the surrounding sand to sunlight. The discovery represents the earliest documented instance of deliberate human crafting to fit logs together, a significant advancement in understanding ancient practices. Preceding this revelation, wood usage by humans was primarily associated with fire-making, digging sticks, and spear-crafting. The scarcity of wood at ancient sites is due to its usual decay and disappearance over time. However, at Colambo Falls, the elevated water levels contributed to the preservation of the wood. Colambo Falls is situated along the Colambo River, just upstream from a 235 meters waterfall at the border of Zambia and Tanzania, in close proximity to Lake Tanganyika. This finding challenges the conventional notion that Stone Age humans were nomadic. The presence of a consistent water and food supply from the forest at Colambo Falls suggests that these humans had the ability to settle in one place and construct various structures. The lead researcher emphasized moving beyond the old view of the Stone Age and recognizing the amazing accomplishments of ancient societies. They were creative, skilled, and innovative, building big wooden structures that were groundbreaking. Their ability to adapt to their environment, like constructing a platform by the river for different activities, shows similarities between them and modern people. Over the span of millions of years during human evolution, there has been a threefold increase in brain size, and behavioral complexity has grown exponentially. Initially, early hominins with smaller brains crafted basic stone tools. As their brains evolved and expanded, their tool-making abilities became more sophisticated, accompanied by the development of advanced subsistence strategies. Traditionally, scientists have believed that the growth in brain size was a primary driver behind these advancements in technology and cognition. These advancements encompassed the development of technologies enabling global exploration, ceremonial burial practices, the establishment of extensive social networks, and the creation of art, music, and language with profound shared meanings. However, recent groundbreaking findings at a fossil site in South Africa are challenging this fundamental principle of human evolution. 
Scientists conducting research within the Rising Star Cave System near Johannesburg, South Africa, have uncovered compelling evidence suggesting that Homo naledi, a small-brained fossil human species, engaged in various sophisticated behaviors typically attributed only to hominins with larger brains. Despite Homo naledi's brain being about one-third the size of our own, they employed fire for illumination demonstrated extensive efforts to bury their deceased, and etched likely symbolic designs into the cave system's rock walls. While these findings are in the early stages, if subsequent research substantiates them, it could prompt a reconsideration of the traditional understanding of our evolutionary path to becoming human. Homo naledi, a relatively recent addition to the spectrum of identified hominin species, was unearthed in 2013 from the depths of the rising star cave system. Surprisingly, its brain size measured only between 450 to 600 cubic centimeters, whereas the average brain size for Homo sapiens is approximately 1,400 cubic centimeters, providing a basis for comparison. Many of us are likely acquainted with England's Stonehenge due to its frequent appearances in movies and documentaries, yet... Africa is home to a comparable structure that could compete with this well-known ancient edifice. Remarkably, this African site predates Stonehenge, earning the distinction of being the world's earliest astronomical site. In contrast to its more famous English counterpart, Nabta Playa predates it by over 7,000 years. Discovered in the 1970s by a team of archaeologists, it comprises a series of stone structures seemingly aligned with the stars, earning it the moniker Stonehenge of Africa. The site includes an array of stone circles, megaliths, and other structures believed to have served astronomical and calendrical purposes, tracking seasonal changes. The ancient people constructing these formations were likely nomadic herders traveling through the region with their livestock. One of the most significant structures at Nabta Playa is the Calendar Stone Circle, featuring four pairs of large stones and an assortment of smaller ones. In a study released in 2007, Archaeologists confirmed that these stones may have been deliberately positioned to align with celestial bodies like Sirius, Arcturus, Alpha Centauri, and the Orion constellation's belt. The findings at Nabta Playa have provided fresh insights into the inception of the Stonehenge site. Current understanding suggests that the Stonehenge site, attributed to the Celts, may have drawn inspiration from the astronomical advancements of the Nabta culture. Recent discoveries across various regions of Africa have highlighted that the continent's history extends beyond Egypt. As time progresses, we look forward to forthcoming discoveries that will further enrich our understanding of this magnificent continent. What are your thoughts about this? I hope you like our story. Until the next one.